Hey guys, welcome to this video tutorial. It's Nathaniel Dodds from tutvid.com. I'm here with my buddy Justin. You gotta go subscribe to his channel. We're doing this new series of tutorials the first Monday of every month and the third Monday of every month. One video on my channel, one video over on his channel. It's gonna be some good stuff. Today we have five creative ways to use or work with masks in Photoshop. Justin, I think I'm handing it off to you first so the good people can see what you've got to give and then I'm gonna come in and finish things off with the final three tips and tricks. Hey everyone, if you're not familiar with me, my name is Justin. I'm gonna show you guys two really cool uses for masks and I'll pass it back to Nate. Let's do so it. So the first effect I'm gonna show you guys is how to use layer masks to reveal and hide certain parts of your selection. And I'll show you guys how we can hide some text behind this building here. So go ahead and grab your text tool and we'll type out whatever word you want. In this case, I'll spell out New York. And I'm just gonna make it so the K is kind of running right into that building and we're gonna want the building to be showing up in front. So what I can do is create a selection here. So I'll grab my polygonal lasso tool and I'll just grab this little edge of the building that I want to cover up the letter and I'll make a small selection there. And now just head over to layer, layer mask, hide selection. So what that's gonna do is hide that selection of your text layer. And as you can see, if you positioned it correctly, your text is now behind your object. So the reveal and hide selection tool is a really useful one to know in Photoshop. Next up, I'm gonna show you guys how you can use quick color mask selection to create an isolated color effect in Photoshop. So I have this image open here and I'm gonna to go to layer, new adjustment layer, black and white. So as you guys know, with any adjustment layer, it automatically comes with a layer mask attached onto it so you can show and hide some parts of the image or effect. And in this case, if we double click on the layer mask, you'll see this button here that says color range. So we can refine the layer mask by a certain color range. So you'll see the ink dropper will appear and you can click on different parts of your image and that part will be masked out. But if you actually hold shift on your keyboard, you can click and drag over an entire selection so that we can reveal the black and white effect on everything but this bright orange car here. And then of course you could adjust the fuzziness and the range and the softness of it and clean up your adjustment afterwards. But that's just one quick way you can use color range to create a quick splash of color in Photoshop. So I think I've done enough talking now. I'll pass it back over to Nate and he's gonna show you guys three more ways you can use masks. Yes, that looks sweet, man. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at some of the, well, some of the things that I really like about masks. The first thing is, and something that is, I think, often overlooked is the quick masking option. Quick masking allows you to very quickly use the brush tool to make a selection. So here I'm gonna grab the brush tool. It's a very big brush, 1,040 pixels, very soft edged. Now the reason that I think this tool in particular is very beneficial is in an image like this, I mean, sure, we can make the brush tiny and we can just exactly paint over this one uh, piece of this pier sticking up out of the water, sure, or this log sticking up out of the water. But one of the things that I love to use this for is just doing something like painting over this whole shadowy part of the image down here, just like this, and then hitting the letter Q, which gets you out of quick mask mode. Q gets you into quick mask mode, and Q then takes you out of quick mask mode. We now have this big selection, but the edges are not quite as soft as they need to be. So we go select, modify, feather, and I typically will feather this by about 400 or so pixels. If you have an older version of Photoshop, you can only take feather up to 200 pixels, um, but just go ahead and apply feather twice at 200 pixels and voila, 400 pixels of feathering. Once we have our selection like this, we can go ahead and add a levels adjustment layer, curves adjustment layer, whatever. And you can see here in my layers panel, that selection that we created is automatically applied as a mask. So we can do something like come over here and add some more blue to this foreground part of the image. Whoop, I'm gonna go blue. So we're gonna drag this over, something like that. Uh, and you can always create a, a, a second selection. So hit Q to go back into quick mask, right? We can just go through like the middle area of our photo. And let's say we wanna make this more red and more magenta, something like that. Go ahead and hit the letter Q. And then again, select, modify, feather. We're gonna do the 400 pixel feather again. Go ahead and add, let's, uh, let's go with a color balance adjustment layer. And again, you can see we get our mask. So these masks are automatically being created because we have that selection uh, there. So we're gonna go mid-tones. We're gonna increase the magenta. We're gonna increase the red. 
maybe even just a drip of blue in there as well, a very little bit. And we'll go to the shadows here too and just choose to increase the magenta and also increase uh, the red just a little bit. So if we hold down our Alter Option key and select this layer here, the, layer, the eyeball for the layer, there's the image when we opened it. There's the image after we did some color changes and we're able to quickly apply those very realistic color changes because we can get a very large soft edge selection with the quick mask tool. So let's move on to the next thing and this is the clipping mask trick. Uh, we've got our lion here and I've actually cut the lion out. I wanna change the color of the lion. So I'm gonna grab a hue saturation adjustment layer and I'm just gonna drag the hue. I'm gonna shift the hue over uh, maybe this way to make somewhat of a purplish lion. Right, so it's a very majestic purple lion. Problem is, of course, as you can see, we have all of this grass, which is also purple. We solve that by clipping this adjustment layer to the layer beneath it, which is the lion that I've cut out of the original image. You can, of course, hold down your Alter Option key and hover between the layers and try to click when that icon appears, or you can use the hot key, Control Alt G, uh, Control Alt G, or on the Mac, Command Option G, and it's gonna automatically clip the layer you have selected to the layer beneath it, and there we have a perfect lion. Uh, you can always unclip by using that same hotkey, Command Option G, again on the Windows uh, machine, Control Alt G. Last but not least, there's some cool things you can do with a mask when it comes to using adjustments on a mask. That's right, you can use adjustments on a mask. And you can see we've got our image open here. I'm just gonna select the entire thing and close the image. Command or Control W to close it, and Command or Control V to paste the book image in. Uh, we can we can free transform it to make it smaller. I'm gonna leave it uh, as it is because that's just that's fine for me. That looks good. What we want to do is sort of mask these books to her skin. Um, now I already have a mask or a, a, a channel or selection really saved as a channel over here on my channels panel. So I'm going to hold down my Commander Control key, select that channel to load it as a selection, turn on my composite RGB channel, and select the composite RGB channel. Very important. And then also hit the little eyeball icon to shut off uh, that alpha channel down there so we don't get that red ruby overlay. Now we have our book layer selected. All we need to do is go layer, layer mask, and choose to reveal the selection. So now we've applied these books generally to her skin area. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and select the layer and I'm gonna change the blend mode maybe to overlay, something like that. You can see we now get this sort of overlaid effect. What if now we want the books to just kind of sort of appear on the rest of the image? Well, what that would mean is, and if I alt click or option click the mask, we, we show the actual alpha channel, we need to make all this black stuff a little bit lighter. So we need to somehow lighten all of this black stuff. Now, because all of this stuff is white, we could just go like, uh, well, we can go up here to image adjustments and we can go levels and drag it right up. One of the things I like to do in levels when I'm working with something like this is drag the output levels. If you drag the black output slider, it takes what is black and just makes it a little less black by infusing a light into it. So we go from solid black to something like a dark gray. So obviously what this would do, and actually let's alt click or option click uh, our mask to get out of the alpha channel view to see what's happening. I've got the mask still selected. I'm gonna hit command or control L, brings up levels. We're applying the levels to the layer mask, not to the book layer. I'm gonna grab the output levels, the black slider. I'm gonna pull it up and you can see as I pull it up, we can just start to see all the books start to come in for the rest of the image. Now, if we wanted to reduce the intensity of it on her skin, but maybe still keep it away from the rest of the image, we could drag the white slider over and that's gonna make the white less white. You can see there in the layer mask, sure enough, it's like a medium slash dark gray. Go ahead and hit okay. So just know that when you're working with layer masks, you can also apply adjustments directly to the layer mask. And that can be very helpful when you just need to balance things in an image. You need that within that same layer, you need to balance like a foreground and background um, of something you're masking. In this case, we want the books on her skin to be a little bit less pronounced. And maybe we want to make the books appear a little bit in the rest of the image as well. So that is it guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Remember, we, this is a new series with Justin and I. We're gonna do this the first Monday of every month, there's gonna be a video on my channel, third Monday of every month, a video on his channel. Make sure you head over to his channel and subscribe. If you haven't on my channel, subscribe, of course, why haven't you? And uh, we're gonna have many, many more of these to come. So Justin, thank you so much for coming in and doing this with me today, man. It's been a blast. Yeah, me and Nate have had a lot of fun setting this up. And we've got another episode coming for you guys soon on my channel. So make sure you subscribe to both of our channels so you don't miss this series. But maybe you guys can give us some suggestions in the comments below. Yeah, we'll see you in the next one.